So we're going to prove the intermediate volume theorem, which states the following. Suppose that we have a function f that is continuous in a closed interval a, b. Further suppose that f of a is negative and f of b is positive. Then there exists um, a number c within the interval a, b, such that f of c is zero. So in other words, if you have a function that's continuous in a closed interval, then there is always a zero somewhere between a negative and a positive function value. So let's see. So basically, the only way we can go from here to here continuously if we hit, hit a zero. Could be more than one, but the intermediate value theorem states that there is at least one. To prove this, we're going to use the least upper bound property. Let us first define a set, S, as follows. X is in S, if and only if X is in the interval A, B, and f of x is negative. And we're going to apply the least upper bound property for this set. First, this set is not empty, right? Because A is in this set. Now this, this symbol means element of belongs to. Second, S is bounded from above because, well, for example, B is a very natural choice for an, for an upper bound, right? S is contained within the interval a, b. So no numbers greater than b are in this set. So we have a non-empty set that is bounded from above. By the least upper bound property, this set has a least upper bound. Let's call it c. And now we're going to prove that f of c cannot be positive or negative. Because in, in both cases, somehow, c could not be the least upper bound. So the fact that c is the least upper bound will imply that the function has to take a zero there. Okay. Let us suppose first that f of c is positive. So what does that mean? Here we have the point a f of a, and then here is somehow c f of c. If this function is continuous, that means that there exists a two-sided limit, and that means that the function values get arbitrarily close to f of c. And what that means is, if f of c is a positive number, there exists an interval i around c such that if x is in i, then f of x is positive. So with another picture, here is the continuous function f, and if f of c is positive, there exists an interval containing c such that the function is positive on this interval. But then there exists y in the interval i that is less than c, this y is an upper bound for our set s. Now why would that be so? <clears throat> because c was an upper bound, every number in the set s is less than c. But if you notice, between y and c, the function is all positive, which means that all the elements that are in s are also less than y. Nothing after y can belong into the set s because we're safely far away from negative values. So therefore, if y is less than c, and y is an upper bound for s, then c is not the least upper bound. Well, that can be because we agreed that c is the least upper bound for the set s. So f of c cannot be positive. Now, what if f of c was negative? It's going to be a very similar argument that if, if f is continuous and f of c is negative, that means that the function is negative on an interval containing c. And now we're going to find a number y within this interval that's greater than c. Um, so there exists y greater than c such that f of y is negative. But then, then y belongs to the set s, so now the number c is not an upper bound at all. This number y, it's greater than c. Therefore, c is not an upper bound. The function value taken at c cannot be negative. We have a function that is continuous at the point c because it is continuous on the entire interval, a, b. Therefore, f of c is defined. And it's a number that is not positive and not negative. Therefore, f of c must be zero. With the least upper bounds, there is this fine balance that we're going to observe a whole lot, that you have a least upper bound for a set, and if you move up, you get an upper bound, but not the, not the least one. And if you move down, that's no longer an upper bound. 
Okay. Suppose now that we have a function that is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and that f of a is less than f of b. Let k be any number between f of a and f of b, so we see an intermediate value. Then there exists number c in the interval a, b such that the function value at c is that number k. We're going to prove this easily. We did the hard work already. This is going to be a very easy proof. So here is our function continuous on the closed interval, and let's say here is our k. So suppose the conditions hold f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, f of a is less than f of b, and k is an, any intermediate value between f of a and f of b. Now we're going to define a new function, g of x, where we just shift uh, the function f down by k units. Now, if f of a was less than k, then f of a minus k is negative. So we're subtracting this much. So here is g of a. And similarly, if k is less than f of b, then f of b minus k is positive. So we just shifted down the whole situation. Now, if we subtract a constant from a continuous function, that difference is continuous, so g is continuous. Well, g is continuous on a, b, g of a is negative, g of b is positive, and so we just work really hard to prove that then there is somewhere inside the interval a number c where the function value is zero. So that means there exists c somewhere in the interval a, b, such that g of c is zero. But recall what g was g of x is f of x minus k, so g of c is f of c minus k. And if that's zero, that means that f of c is k. So this is just a few lines after we prove the existence of the zero value in case you have a positive negative. That completes our proof. Let me make a few comments. We assume that f of a is less than f of b, so now we're supposed, to, we're supposed to go through another proof where we look at the case when f of a is greater than f of b. But that's a very, very similar argument. Or as practice, you can write out that proof. Before we go, I have one question. So we started with this picture where we had a continuous function where the beginning uh, function value was negative, the end is positive, and we proved that there is a zero. Suppose we have this picture. What is our C? Which zero did we pick up? You think about that. Thank you for watching.